But the big shop is right in back of you. Yeah. So come on in and I yeah, gotta we'll share the, the... the latest project with you. It's really cool. Your timing is impeccable. Oh yes. So this is um this is the latest automotive project in the shop. And at the Mullins Collection in Oxnard, California, there's a 1937 Delahaye. And it's the third car in, and it absolutely stopped me in my tracks, and I couldn't get past that car for about an hour and a half. I stood there, and you know, you're surrounded with unbelievable cars, but I just literally could not tear my eyes off this Delahaye. It really struck me as perfection um, in a lot of ways. In 1934 or thereabouts, the German government put up a million mark prize for anybody that could break this record at this track. Bugatti had a very rich patron had a female that wanted to go racing. She's at the racetrack, she starts to get beat by the V12. The V12's a brand new thing. She goes to Bugatti, says, I want a V12. And Bugatti says, I don't do V12s. <laughs> she says, no problem, I will pay for all the R&D and development of the V12. Nice patrons are great things <laughs> yeah. in art and for the history of the automobile. Three chassis are built. The one chassis has this beautiful race car body and it goes on to win the million mark prize. The other two chassis get sent to Chaprom and they get these bodies put on them and they are beautiful. Unbelievable, beautiful bodies on what is the equivalent of an F1 chassis. <laughs> now this is blowing my mind because as you know, I'm a car guy and I'm looking at this car and I'm understanding that this is a Formula One chassis that's underneath this thing. This is the most powerful, most state-of-the-art race car chassis that had been thought of up until that day. And then it gets sent to Chapron for this beautiful body. So here's pictures of this beautiful car taking the checkered flag at the racetrack. Here it is at New York on Rue de whatever. And then here it is with Ava Gabor in Hollywood. <laughs> what is this car? Is this car... It's a powerhouse, it's, it's an animal, but yet it is drop-dead gorgeous to the nth degree. That was hard for me to wrap my mind around. Mm -hmm. So, the car, my car was inspired by that car. To do it justice, it can't have a small block Chevy under the hood. It's got to have this ripping ass V12. Well, Ryan Falconer makes the ripping ass V12. So, we talked to Ryan and got on board with the whole project. Um, this is dyno at 648 horsepower. I told Ryan, it can roar like a lion, it's gotta idle like a kitten. So the car will idle like a kitten, but it makes 650 horsepower and V12 horsepower, which is insanely smooth. Ryan's motors are absolutely state of the art. Mm -hmm. um, feel the short side radius on that exhaust part. Port, if you doubt me. It's real, it looks it's, like a real high port. It's a freaking piece yeah. of work. As you can see here, this isn't some sort of un 12 universal throttle bodies that have been bolted down in two rows of six. No, this is a purpose casting that is cast for this motor. Everything is absolute oh, wow. factory quality. When you look at the intake manifold castings and the quality of the castings and the gaskets and everything else, you just go, wow, okay, now I understand why they're as expensive as they are. Um, they've never really found a home. You know, Ryan developed this motor and some supercars have been designed around mm -hmm. them that never could pass EPA. Mm -hmm. They've put, been put in some 7.8 uh, scale P51 Mustangs very <laughs> successfully, so an airplane motor. It's a dry sump motor. Yeah, it's a pumping innocence. It's cool. a shaft goes all the way back on the Damper. Is that Chip Foose cool. building a Chip car? Chip Foose is building Woody? a car, a Woody, right now with this exact motor, and Steve Mole has built one car for Eric Sauser and is building another yeah. right now. So the hood, the trumpets will just stick through the hood. Just a tiny, tiny bit. This one will be flush, and this one will roll down just a tiny little bit. Um, the lapped panel construction, you see it here on the side of my motorcycle, mm -hmm. where we've taken the shape and we're dividing the whole shape into these six inch laps. And we're using the laps to accentuate the body line and the flow of the sculpture that we're trying to create. So what we're gonna do is, we're actually gonna do the whole car using this technique. So you can see, here's the line drawing of the car, mm -hmm. and then we start to add these lap panels. Well, this first line is actually the line that the original Delahaye had. So I'm just accentuating those lines and adding a few more. 
Just down the road or down the line at the Mullins Museum is the Atlantic Coupe, the Bugatti Atlantic Coupe that's made of magnesium. And that car couldn't be welded, so it had a standing seam that ran over the top of the fenders and over the top of the whole car is this proud standing seam with these exposed rivets. So I'm kind of taking that historic precedence and taking it to the Randy Grubb Extreme by adding a thousand rivets and a thousand rivet lines. <laughs> so the whole vehicle will be lapped panel with polished rivet lines, really extreme, with those little V12 trumpets just poking through the hood. It should have a real muscularity, um, being polished aluminum, the panels will be exposed, you'll see exactly how the car is built, so there's a rawness to it, but yet with those trumpets sticking through there, it's going to have this power, and this design is a very interesting design. The Here's the, the, the front end buck, mm -hmm. and the the fenders are actually higher than the hood. Mm -hmm. You can see it here, the way it's laid out. In this particular car design, the, the hood is actually a little bit lower than the fenders. The fenders are about half an inch or three quarters of an inch above the hood. And it gives it this very aggressive, you know, uh, fender up, hood down, and with those uh, lap panels and the exposed trumpets, I really think it's going to have a really powerful presence and a really cool feel. So right now we're at the, this is what I call the body tub. Um, as a coach builder, this is the first car that's had doors. Believe it or not, the B702, the Indy car, Jay's car, those are all step over designs. You step on the, the B702 has a big running board that you're, it's designed to step on and then the low cut door so you can swing your leg over and step in it. The first door that I got to build was actually on my deco liner right there. That was the first door that I got mm -hmm. to build from scratch. And then on my deco pods, the deco pods all have doors. So I got to build lots and lots of <laughs> doors. So the deco pods were the experience of building doors and now I get to bring it to a car. So this is the first car that I've built that'll actually have functioning operating doors. And as you see, they're gonna be very large uh, suicide doors. Here's the door frame. And I'm just now getting the whole thing framed up. And I'm doing the whole thing thus far out of eighth inch aluminum yeah. so that it's stronger than dirt. And you know, so many of these suicide type cars, the doors are really funky and they don't work well and they're hard to close. So it's about creating a structure that can support the door properly so that you can swing that door shut and have it slam like a real car. So all this time is eighth? All eighth. And then we'll be lapping over it with more material that is in effect decorative to add the, add the rivet lines. So there'll be a panel added here that'll have a deep bead pressed into it and the windshield accent and all that stuff. So, so this is kind of like I say, this is kind of like the frame or the subframe for the body. What do you think it'll weigh when it's all done? It's really light. You know, I build out of aluminum and the car will probably come in just over 3,000 pounds. I'd say maybe 32. Wow. And with that 650 so horsepower, yeah. that'd be good. What, uh, what tires are you going to put on? Well, it's just that happened to have them right here. <laughs> Oh, we did. We started with a set of 20 by 8 Dayton triple cross laced. Those are 100 spoke. And when you take the 100 spoke and you blow it up to that 20 inch diameter, I feel it has a very nice spacing and a very nice feel. The Delahaye that I inspired, that inspired this car, has 18 inch wires with 30 inch rubber. So these 20s have 31 inch rubber on them. So knowing where my cross member was going to be, now I, I know where my frame had to be. Well, it had to have this massive kick to get the <laughs> frame up to where my cross member was. So this frame was really kind of neat. We designed the frame in the computer. Um, and the compu as you see, the frame does all sorts of cool things. It, it wiggles, it snakes, it does all this really neat stuff. The computer program broke down the four surfaces of my box so that they could be cut out of eighth inch flat sheet with a water jet. Once the flat, so all this material started as flat sheets. And then I took those flat sheets and welded the four sides together into the box section that you see. Mm -hmm. But what's really cool about this technique and this water jet program is these little tabs. Oh yeah, yeah. They had these little indexing tabs 
that were uniquely spaced roughly every six inches so that the whole thing keyed together and I knew that I was on track when I was putting the frame together. It's funny how technology comes and everybody jumps on board on the same time. I'd seen a sculpture of my water jet guy. It was a three-sided object and the whole thing wiggled and turned. And I said, how did you do that? And he said, they told me about this program. So that was in the back, back of my mind. Well, here it is played out. And the day that I come home from the water jet guy with the, with the program, is the day that I opened it was hot rod or street rodder and there's a whole layout on on this exact freaking technique. We want the trumpets poking through the hood. And we want the trumpets right in the right spot. So this is where the motor sits to get my trumpets where I want them. The motor could easily be down four inches in the frame. We've got tons of ground clearance. There's no reason other than having the trumpets up, but I want my trumpets up, so that's where the motor's got to go. With that motor sitting up there, I can put a completely uninterrupted X member in it and have the frame above my cross member. So my cross member, my X member, will be insanely strong and stop all torsional twisting in my frame, which, here again, you know, it comes back to make my door strong enough. my lock, Panel, and you can see, this was, what this section was created from. So I start by making a really accurate buck, and then as you see here, I literally encase the buck in aluminum. Are you going to leave any wood in there? No. no. And then in this case, these pieces slid out the end. Um, this is, you know, this is all aluminum, and I work it full hard. This is 3003H14, and a lot of people anneal it, and a lot of people do other stuff to it, and a lot of people would tell you that you can't shape a inch, but, you know, I like to do the impossible, so <laughs> I, I, I work it full hard, and um, this was a real stretch and a test for me. I was not sure whether this was going to work or not, and all I knew is I wanted a very strong structure for my door. Well, it all becomes about can you shape it? And all this has been shaped, it's all been hammered, and there's a very slight contour in this stuff. It's not flat anymore, it's all been contoured and shaped a little bit. So it was a revelation for me. What's nice about working this thick material is I can weld it. it mm -hmm. I can't weld the thin material to this extent. It would warp and it would distort. But the eighth inch is, is solid enough that I'm able to weld it in very short bursts and keep the distortion to a minimum. And so far, <laughs> so far, because, you know, you know, I'm just a pilgrim on the path. Like I said, this is my first set of doors, and I'm sure hoping that it's gonna be strong enough. So sit there, Brandon, you gotta look over those stacks and just get an idea. I mean, is that That's just gonna, you is, want. is that just gonna be rough? Yes. Is that hard to take? And that's Legner right there. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I can't, I can't, well, Shack if I put my right toe out, out, I can hit the, I can hit the fire. That's a good sign.